Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to the next question, we have to find the derivative of f of x equals 3x plus 1 to the power of 4 times x cubed minus x plus 1 to the power of 5 in simplified factor form. Now, the first thing to realize with this function here is that it's the product of two functions. So we got this function here, and then we got this function here. And then both of these functions are composite functions themselves. So we know when we're going to take the derivative of each of these, we're going to have to apply the chain rule. But from the outside, since it's two functions multiplied by each other, we're first going to have to apply the product rule. So let's start the derivative over here. And with the product rule, we know we take the derivative of one function. So the derivative of this function, we would bring the 4 down. We'd have 3x plus 1 to the power of 3. And then we'd have to take the derivative of the inside, which is just 3. And then we would have to multiply it by this function, left as is. Right, so we're just applying the product rule right now. So this here, this bracket, represents the derivative of this function. And we multiplied it by that function, left as is. And then we're going to have to add this function, left as is, multiplied by the derivative of this function. The derivative of this function, we would bring the 5 down. We'd have x cubed minus x plus 1 to the power of 4. And then we would multiply it by the derivative of that inner function. Derivative of x cubed minus x plus 1 is 3x squared minus 1 like that. Now we can't just leave it like this, we have to simplify it. So notice that we got these two terms that we're working with, this one and then we're adding this term here. So let's see what we can factor from both of these terms. Notice that uh, we got this bracket 3x plus 1, that is common in both. However, this 3x plus 1 is to the power of 3, this 3x plus 1 is to the power of 4. And when we factor a common bracket out, we have to take one with the lowest exponent. So we're going to take out this 3x plus 1 to the power of 3. Right? So we took out this, and then we took out that, and there's going to be one more 3x plus 1 left because there's four of them here. We're only taking out 3. What else can we factor out that's common? Well, notice that this bracket and this bracket are the same. This one's to the power of 5, this one's to the power of 4. So we can take out the lowest exponent to the power of 4. And then the numbers here will have 5. We can bring the 5 in front, if anything. And then here we'll have 4 times 3, which is 12. And between 5 and 12, there's nothing in common that we could take out. So we have to leave the numbers, unfortunately, inside the terms. So when we factor these out, what are we going to be left with? Well, we'll still be left with this 4 and 3. So 4 times 3 is just 12. Let's just write that together. 3x plus 1 to the power of 3 we took out. And then notice that there is a x cubed minus x plus 1 to the power of 5, but we only took out that bracket to the power of 4. So there's still going to be an x cubed minus x plus 1 factor left. Only one of them because there's five of them. We took out four of them. Right? So this expression is done. And then we're going to be adding what? The 5 we could put in front. And then we're still left with 3x plus 1 to the power of 4. We took out three of them. So there's still a 3x plus 1 left x cubed minus x plus 1 to the power of 4. Notice that we took that out, so we can get rid of that full expression, and we're still left with that 3x squared minus 1. Right, so it's looking a lot better. All we have to do now is we have to simplify this remaining bracket here. So what we got to do is we got to expand so we'll bring the 12 in here, foil these two brackets out, then factor the 5 in, and then we are done. So let's rewrite everything. You know what? Let's not even write this. I'm just going to, just to save time, we keep go. we uh, rewrite these in the next line. I'm just going to work with this square bracket here. So we got 12x cubed minus 12x plus 12. 
and then we'll have five outside. And then if we FOIL this out, three X times three X squared is nine X cubed. Three X times negative one is negative three X. One times three X squared is three X squared and then minus one. And then further, 12 X cubed minus 12 X plus 12. Let's bring that five inside the bracket. So five times nine is 45 X cubed. Five times negative three is negative 15 X plus 15 X squared minus five. So looking pretty good here. Now we just got to collect the like terms, simplify all of them. So we got this 12 X cubed, 45 X cubed. We got this negative 12 X, negative 15 X. Uh, the 15 X squared is just by itself. There's no other X squared terms. And then we got this 12 and this negative five. So our next bracket, 12 X cubed plus 45 X cubed gives us 57 X cubed. Uh, the next one is this 15 X squared. That's just by itself. Then we got minus 12 X minus 15 X. That gives us minus 27 X. And then we got 12 minus five, which is seven. So we got this remaining bracket. You always wanna check, can you factor anything out? Notice we could factor out a three from this, this, and this, but we can't factor out a three from this seven. So this bracket here is as simplified as it gets. And then we keep bringing these brackets down. So three X plus one to the power of three, X cubed minus X plus one to the power of four. And that is your simplified derivative for that function. So pretty long process. You gotta first do the product rule on these two functions, and then each of these functions is a composite function. So you have to do the chain rule when you're taking the derivative of each of those. Then simplifying it, you gotta look for common factors, uh, the brackets and numbers. In this case, the numbers, there was nothing common we could take out, so we could only take out these two expressions. Simplify that remaining big bracket. This is your final answer.